Yeah. Are we live? Mm -hmm. Yay! Welcome to Christina's Kitchen. My wonderful back row audience and front row audience and everybody else. And Facebook. <coughs> I'm going to take those off so you can hear me. That's okay. I am so excited that you guys are here. I'm so excited for this class. We are going to have so much fun with pumpkins, also butternut squash. Um, and we'll be talking about more of that in a minute. But uh, Daniel, you are going to have to like go over and like uh, show the Facebook audience what we have before we demolish it. Because we're not right. be there anymore. <laughs> So here we have, can you see it? Mm -hmm. This is uh, mac and cheese, and then we also have uh, pumpkin pudding. And we're going to be demonstrating both of those today, but uh, we're going to let everybody eat them first, and then we'll get started. So, um, uh, back Adri over there, please. Adrian says, hello, Christina. <laughs> Give you a little close up here so you can yeah, see. Let me take the plastic grab off of this before you go close up at. here. Alright. We're gonna hope that this <laughs> pumpkin pudding is just more like a pie. Oh yeah. You see that there? There we go. Alright, if that doesn't make you hungry, I don't know what will. <laughs> Alright, so now let's go back. So that's the teaser. <laughs> Well, good evening. Glad I could be here with the class. And glad to be here for a while. We haven't met long last time. <laughs> We've missed him for a while. Yeah, I've missed, I've missed a few of these. But why don't we open with a word of prayer? Father in heaven, we thank you for your blessings towards us. We thank you, Lord, for opportunity that we have to eat together and to enjoy this good food that you've created and to have fellowship and learn about how we can uh, make this tasty food. I'm ready to bless this class and bless this food we're about to eat. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Adrian right. said yummy. <laughs> Yay! All right, so online Facebook class, hang tight. Give us a couple minutes to dish up a few plates. I guess uh, you can watch us and wish you, you were here. And uh, then we'll get started on how to make it all. Come on over. Look at that. Like she's got the salad just in time. I'm gonna need a knife to cut this with. We shall see how this pumpkin pudding comes out because I normally let it sit overnight and this is only set for less than four hours. <laughs> so it's gonna be a little softer than usual. But I think it will still taste good. The first one is going to be the hardest one to get out. What? Let me do Whoop. that. All right. Which plate am I putting this on? Gable's. Where's Gable's plate? The one with the salad. Gable, where is There's salad. The There's no salad here. Gable took off. The plate vanished. <laughs> I learned you have my pudding. Can you give me a clean plate? Do you want it on a separate plate? Is that why you took it? Yeah. Yeah, or you want it here? Separate. Separate? Okay. Yeah. Alright, I think 
had to give them. I'm pretty impressed with the fact it actually came out of here. So you don't need a knife? Yes, I do. You need a knife. It would be wonderful to have a knife. It's a knife. Thank you. Have a knife. Much better. Much Every, easier. Everyone online is just is drooling, just drooling over, over, here. <laughs> over, over your pie. Is that too small of a piece, Joshua? No, it's too big. Okay. Hey, you guys who are watching online, leave a, leave a comment and, and let us know where you're watching from. And what what would you think about this? If you think it looks if it looks good or not? And that and that says yummy. Adrian is wishing I was there. Elise is watching from Indiana. Well, welcome. We're glad you can join us. We're going to show you how to make all this yummy food here in a little bit. Michelle is watching from Colorado. Michelle wants to know, is your mac and cheese recipe on your webpage? Nope. It's a brand new recipe that we just invented today. So you'll have to keep watching, Michelle, for the recipe, but we will put it on before the evening is over. We'll, we'll put it on, at least in the comments on, uh, on this uh, live video before the evening is out. So keep watching, Michelle. Sitting up for four hours. Okay. 
Oh no, Gary can't make it this evening. I'm gonna have to eat his portion. <laughs> he says, eat some for me, Daniel. Don't worry, I will, Gary. I'll eat your portion and mine. But we are sorry you can't make it. Especially since I beat you this evening. So here, I want I want to know if these if these guys approve. Is it is it is it good? It's good. All right, all right. Just wanted to, wanted to know that. All right. It's not your seconds already. Oh wow. Yeah. Colonel Miller says, "Bring on, bring on those pu tasty pumpkins." <laughs> well, that's what we're eating is pumpkin tonight. Uh, so I'm going to pick on Matthew wherever he went. He coming? Yeah, he's coming. Uh, well, maybe I'll wait to pick on him just a minute. I'm going to start out with how to make the pumpkin pudding. Uh,
and there's lots of variations you can do with it. But uh, what I used um, is blanched almond flour. Um, the difference between regular almond flour and blanched almond flour is that blanched almond flour is made out of blanched almonds. What does that mean? It means there's no skin on them. So instead of having brown specks in your crust, it makes a much lighter, prettier crust with that uh, almond flour that doesn't have the almond skins on it. You can make the same crust with regular almond flour, almond meal. You can make your own almond meal with it. Uh, you can do it with the skins and it still turns out fine. Uh, but if you're looking for something that's really pretty, uh, then you want to use the blanched. Also has a finer texture as well. So what does our recipe call for? How much almond flour do we put in here? One and a half cups, all right. All right, so one and a half cups of almond flour. And then what else goes in here? One quarter teaspoon of salt. Quarter teaspoon of salt. adjust it how you like if you want more or less and then I just mix that coconut oil in until it's well incorporated into my almond flour um, where's Daniel at? are you running the camera because I'm not sure if they can see anything from where it's at Daniel's working on the recipes put just a tiny bit more in. I had only put two tablespoons at the beginning. Adrian says she can see perfectly. Yay, I'm so happy. Well, now you should see me even better. So now we've got the coconut oil incorporated in. Now we're going to add the maple syrup. And once again, it's about two to three tablespoons. And this is our liquid. You just want to do it until it's your de desired consistency. Also, if you don't want it so sweet, um, 
you can do a little bit of water instead of the maple syrup. So basically the consistency you want is kind of like a graham cracker that holds together a little bit. Um, have like your graham cracker crust, it's not going to have a lot of texture to it, but it's going to be enough that when you crumble into a ball, it's going to stay in a ball. So now we're just going to take our oil spray. Yep. See if I can do this left handed. I don't do quite as well with my left hand as I do with my right. Okay, so I just sprayed my pie pan. these uh, graham cracker crumbs and put them in the bottom of my pie pan and it just looks like a pile of crumbs but all I have to do is start pushing them off to the side and then I just simply start patting it into place and into the shape that I want You see how I'm just like pushing it out from the middle towards the sides and then patting it along the sides? Can you see okay, Joshua? You see what I'm doing? pencil this in and that is once you're done pressing it into the pie pan you want to poke it with a fork like you do with any pie crust thank you but i'm going to show you i'm going to pass this around so you all can see what this looks like before i poke it with a fork I did not poke it and it was like all bubbly <laughs> and the whole like side started falling down and it was like it, it was a very sad looking crust when it was finished baking. I was like oh that pretty crust and I destroyed it because I forgot to poke it. 
So it really does make a difference. All right, I'm gonna send this with Matthew to go put it in the oven. We're gonna bake it at 350. Do you want me to preheat the oven? Yeah, you have to preheat the oven to 400. So you preheat your oven to 400 degrees and then bake it at 350 for about uh, anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. It depends on your oven and how many pies you put in the oven at once. So if you do one pan, one pie, it goes faster. If you put two or three, it takes longer. Um, but uh, anywhere from 12 to 15 minutes is how long it takes. You just want it nicely golden. That was fast, wasn't it? <laughs> Matthew works magic in there. <laughs> it's even cool. <laughs> so you want it nice and golden looking. Um, you don't want it burnt, of course, but uh, when it's starting to get nice and golden, that's when it's done. And that's neat because it actually poofs up a little bit in the oven. Um, and then the other secret is you want to make sure it's completely cool before you put your pudding or pie or whatever is in because if you don't, it will turn soggy. So if you let it cool completely, then uh, it will actually stay firm and, and crispy. And I will say, um, the longer your pudding sits in it, the softer the crust will get, but generally speaking, it'll keep two days with a nice firm crust, and then after two days, it'll start to get soggy. So uh, you don't want to like, I mean, you can still eat it once it's soft, but it does start getting soft at the bottom. So I like to, if I'm gonna make it, I try to do it like the night before and eat it the next day if I can. Leftovers will keep one more day. Um, and then I know my crust is gonna start softening up. But isn't that easy? It's so funny. It's <laughs> if pie ever stays on long enough to get soft. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently only Daniel and I. <laughs> We're not super sweet eaters, so you and Maya take a while for the two of us to eat. You guys have kids, you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> It'll never last more than a day. So that's our crust. Uh, so now we're going to work on the pudding. Um, let me rinse the pie dough off my hands. You know, <laughs> today I was uh, I was making the pie crust at like 1.30 this afternoon. And um, a customer walks in. And I'm like, I come out with like, you know, movie fingers like this. I'm like, you'll have to get your own menu because I can't touch them. <laughs> oh, let me rinse this off. Yep. I don't need to see her first. 
I do need the lid though. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Alright, so. Uh, someone tell me what I'm supposed to put in here. What's our first 15 ingredient? Ounces. Can, pumpkin, or one, three, four cups of cooked squash or pumpkin. That's right. Daniel, can we put that up a little closer to me? Because I'm getting tired of yelling at it. <laughs> the, it doesn't have the microphone on it, so it will pick up just slightly better. All right, I know I put, uh, there's one. Okay, so 15 ounces of canned pumpkin is what we're going to use. And I will say, there is a difference between comp different companies of canned pumpkin. Uh, in flavor, in texture, in how watery it is. Uh, so your cheaper off brands, or your generic brands, or your... Kroger brands or whatever else uh, generally are a little more watery, a little less flavor. Your more expensive brands are generally a little thicker and have a little more squash them and a little better flavor. So the brand and really does make a difference on the quality of your canned pumpkin. So you get what you pay for. Yes, you do. <laughs> and there are different varying qualities within the organic pumpkins as well. Um, so. So what's every, the, what's the every company. You used? Uh, today I used the only one that was left on the Kroger shelf <laughs> <laughs> because the shelf was empty and there was only one left. <laughs> so that kind of decided what we were using today. <laughs> so uh, none of the rest of us can make it here at Whitley City unless we wait for another shelf. No, I didn't buy all of them. I just bought the only brand that was oh, left no. on the shelf. <laughs> it wasn't the one can left, but it was the only brand left. Uh, sometimes that's better than not at all, right? Yeah. Okay, so what goes next? 13 ounces coconut cream or one two-thirds coconut milk or nut cream. Okay, so you want a thick, creamy milk. You don't want a real watery milk. Um, that is going to make a difference. So, uh, what you are eating, I actually used uh, the Thai Kitchen Coconut Cream um, in the can, but if you do not have that, you can use the Thai Kitchen Coconut Milk, um, which has almost the same amount of cream. It has a little less cream than the plain cream does, uh, but you can use either one. But what you're eating is plain cream. Um, if you're going to substitute with something else because you don't want coconut, um, Daniel, you're kind of in the view. Can you stand on this side? Uh, if you want something else that's not coconut, you can do like a cashew cream uh, or something like a thicker, not a real watery milk. Yes? So you want to put it in the oven and set the timer for 12 minutes. And change it to 350 after you put it in the oven. Matthew is baking our crust. Alright, so we're going in the coconut cream. Alright, what else goes in here? Three tablespoons of cornstarch. Okay, and this three tablespoons of cornstarch. dry before I get it wet. I think I have a dry one over here. I'm good. Yeah, cinnamon. Cinnamon? Okay, I have a Salt dry teaspoon of cinnamon already in it, so we're good. Okay, one teaspoon of lemon juice, you said? One uh, teaspoon. Okay, one teaspoon of lemon juice is in there. I'm relying on you guys because I'm not checking you. <laughs> one half teaspoon of salt. Half teaspoon of salt. Six, eight, 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 six, eight
salt, check. Six <laughs> tablespoons of maple syrup. All right, here's the maple syrup. Six tablespoons. Okay, so question for all you mathematicians. Uh, how many tablespoons in a quarter cup? Just about that many. <laughs> How many tails is it a quarter cup? Anyone know besides Matthew? We all said about six. You should know. Look at me. You should know. Because I've taught you this. <laughs> hand in the back. I'll give you a hint. It's one fourth of a cup, right? So how many tablespoons are in it? Four tablespoons. Four tablespoons and a quarter cup. So if this is six tablespoons, it's going to be a quarter cup plus two tablespoons. And then I are clearly to cook. <laughs> All right. One, one teaspoon of cinnamon. One teaspoon of cinnamon. All right. Or coriander. Is, is that like cinnamon? Coriander is a little bit like cinnamon. It's similar. It's not the same, but it's similar. I'm going to leave this over here. There it is. How much cinnamon did you say I was supposed to put in here? Sorry. One teaspoon. One teaspoon, okay. And what else goes in here? One fourth. Yeah, one fourth teaspoon. And four. Cardamom? Yeah, powder. Anybody heard of cardamom before? It is very, very, very strong. There's a reason there's only a quarter teaspoon in here. <laughs> uh, in Europe, it's uh, uh, they make a cardamom bread that's really strong. Uh, and then what else comes in here? One quarter teaspoon of ginger powder. All right, that's going to give us just a little bit of warmth. So is that everything? I hear four conversations going. <laughs> I'm just checking on the rest of the mac and cheese. Okay. Tell them there's more. We're going to make more, don't worry. We're going to make more. All right, if that's everything, then I'm going to blend this. That's it. We have it. carefully. Do you see what it says in the instructions when it comes to stirring it? <laughs> Stir it constantly. What else does it say after that? <laughs> use, use a pot lid as a shield. <laughs> because it spits at you. It spits. And you will want
lot to spit at me about right now. Like so turn this thing on. Like spaghetti sauce. It's, yeah, it's worse than spaghetti sauce. <laughs> I think of all the things I make, this probably spits the worst. <laughs> of everything I make. I don't think I have a stirring spoon here, though. Worse than your tomato soup? I need one of the flat bottom. The bamboo spoon the flat bottom. Yes, it's much worse than tomato soup. <laughs> yes, it's worse than strawberry sauce. Mercy. <laughs> Christina, where's your shield? I've got my shield right here. Okay. But I'm waiting for a spoon. I don't need to use it yet because it's going to warm up. Use your sword. My sword? My shield. I'm all set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have safety glasses. <laughs> oh, I was going to tell you, Adrian knew the answer. Four, four, ta four tables. Yeah. Good job, Adrian. I'm proud of you. In a quart? Well, how many tablespoons are in a cup? Now you got to do math. Sixteen. Sixteen? So sixteen times four is what? <laughs> I asked everyone else, not me. I did not <laughs> I know that. I know that. I already figured it out. I know the answer. Oh, did I say hello from Janet? No, you didn't. Janet from California says hello. Your show is Welcome, great. Welcome, Janet. We're glad you can join us. Was, Go ahead and tell us. That was a while ago. Okay, so. No, I want you to figure it out. I can count. 16 and 16 is 32. So a pint, there's 32 and a pint, and there's 64 and a cup. And my quart. A gallon, whatever. Can't talk. 64 and a cup, quart. 64 and a quart. 64 times 4 would be how many in a gallon? In a gallon? Let's see. Mm -hmm. See, Matthew, you were slow. You were slow giving the answer, so Adrian had it already. She said 64. I already knew the answer. Oh, okay. I was asking everyone else if they knew because I already did this problem. I know the answer. Yeah. Oh, okay. We do all kinds of math problems in the kitchen. <laughs> so what we're doing is we're bringing this to a boil. And when it first starts spitting, that is not when you start the time. You start the time when it's boiling very well while you are stirring it. Because like it's starting to spit right now, but it's not at a full boil yet. Does anyone have a timer when I'm ready to start the time? Anybody have a stopwatch? Or a phone oh, yeah. timer? Or a phone stopwatch? I got a phone timer. Okay. Get it ready to start at two minutes. And I'll tell you when to start. Oh. Well, a little bit fast. Okay. And then there's Daniel over here finding his corner. Almost to the point where we're ready to start it. back there. I use my shield to uh, use my shield to keep it from spitting on my hand. You see how I'm doing that? The more it spits, the closer I hold the shield down. <laughs> and I will say if you're doing like, say you're doing three pies, uh, and you you put all three in one pot, it's going to spit three times as much. So, like, the last time I did three pies was for last Christmas. Um, and uh, when it was done, even with using the shield, it was on the ceiling, the walls, and me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it looks like those mud pots in Yellowstone. It does look like a mud pot. <laughs> <laughs> Boiling mud pots. <laughs> Yeah, for 
pretty much. <laughs> well, I didn't want to stir it three times. I mean, of all things, yeah, I'd rather just stir it once and get it over with. <laughs> what I did today, I did two pies, so that that's fit plenty. My my pot lid was orange when I was done. Two more minutes then and then take it out. There it is. It's like I know I have a spatula here somewhere. So what time is it? We doing good on time? Three. Okay, yeah. So we've got time. Oh yeah, we don't want to like lose any of the wonderful pudding at all. It's good for the last drop. So then you just want to put it in the fridge and let it sit up. And I recommend overnight or eight hours, like make it in the morning, use it for dinner. Um, but what you ate, <laughs> I had to do some some uh, special tricks to make it set up in four hours, okay? So what I did, first of all, I made the crust and the crust was hot. I had this that was hot too and I couldn't pour in the crust because my crust wasn't cooled off. So I put the lid on the pudding so it wouldn't dry up and just left it sitting on the counter in the pot and took my pie crust and stuck a fan on it and blew a fan on it for about 20 minutes to cool that crust down <laughs> till it was room temperature. So then I poured the pudding into the crust and uh, stuck it in the refrigerator for about 15 minutes just to start cooling down a little bit. And then I put plastic wrap on it and stuck it in the freezer I left in the freezer for about 45 minutes. Uh, I checked it every 15 minutes to make sure no ice was forming on the top. I knew as long as there was no ice on top, it was still warm enough to keep itself warm. Uh, so about 45 minutes, I was able to take it back out and put it back in the fridge. And we managed to set it up in four hours. <laughs> but I don't recommend that. <laughs> oh, I prefer to either make it in the morning and serve it in the evening or make it at night and serve it the next day. So. But anyway, if you ever get in a pinch, now you know what I did. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give this to you. Just go ahead and take it out. Yeah, and you can take this too. All right, so we're ready to do the last one. And this is why I'm pick on Matthew now that you walked out of here. <laughs> so uh, when Matthew came over this afternoon, he uh, uh, apprentice, he's an apprentice student and he's there here every Tuesday afternoon. So he came in and he said, what are we doing for the class? Well, I had already made the pudding and it was in the freezer when he got here trying to cool down. Um, but I told him, I said, we are gonna invent a recipe uh, that I've never made before, but I've wanted to try. I have friends who've done it and I've seen varying different recipes for it. And that is for uh, pumpkin mac and cheese. And he's like, <laughs> I was like, but we're not going to serve it unless you like it. <laughs> so you know uh, he liked it because I served it, right? So yeah, so we, uh, we put this recipe together. We started with looking at a few other recipes to get basic ideas of proportions and how much. 
and then uh, sat down with the uh, computer and wrote down all the different ingredients that we wanted to put in. And uh, then we made it, and then we tasted it, and we're like, now it needs some help. So we added another ingredient to it uh, to help the flavor, and then uh, Matthew decided that he liked it better than my regular mac and cheese that I make here at the restaurant. So that's what we're making. <laughs> or is it recommended? <laughs> it's Matthew recommended. <laughs> these for me so that I don't have to wash them right now. So these are pre-washed cashews. And then uh, the next ingredient that goes in is uh, coconut milk. I just use the Thai kitchen coconut milk. It doesn't have to be coconut cream. It can be any kind of coconut milk. Just don't use light coconut milk. Use the full fat. Um, it makes a huge difference. So uh, let's see here. Would it be possible for you to get a few short um, your books with your phone? Just regular video. So here's our coconut milk, except I just got rid of my spatula. Matthew, I need one more spatula. this recipe you can use any kind of milk you want you can use almond milk um, you can use uh, soy milk or whatever kind of milk that you want um, I chose coconut because I love how creamy it makes it and I really like that buttery flavor that it gives to it um, but if you don't like coconut you can substitute with any other milk so we have our cashews and our coconut milk in here what comes next I'm gonna need your help go sit down <laughs> Your services are required. Requested. Requested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need to start with an R. Yeah. We'll, we'll be nice. We won't require. We'll just simply request. <laughs> One, three, four cup of cooked butternut squash or 15 ounces of canned pumpkin. All right. So we are actually going to use cooked butternut squash. Um, so what we did was we took our butternut squash and we cut it into chunks and I put it in a kettle and I steamed it. And it took about, um, gosh, are we both in the frame? You can see both of us. Uh, I yes. moved, sorry. <laughs> uh, so we cut it in chunks and we steamed it. It took about um, between 30 to 40 minutes to steam it until it was nice and soft. And uh, so, we are just going to take the chunks and scoop the scoop the butternut squash out of the skin. And if you see any seeds, take them out. Like this one has seeds, so I just gently use my spoon to scrape just the seeds out. Seeds and the strings. Keep everything else. And we need how much of this? I heard Joshua say it. It was like, what, one and two-thirds cup or something like that? One, three-fourths. One and three-quarters cup. Okay. That's about the amount that you would find in a can of canned pumpkin. Quarters cup of cooked squash. 
byproduct from making beer. So there are different kinds of yeast. But this one is the nutritional yeast. Okay, so we've got that in there. And that just helps with the cheesy flavor. Uh, help it taste like cheese. What else goes in here? Two to three teaspoons of salt. Okay. If you want to take a pencil, you can mark out the three, because I put two in and I thought it was plenty salty. So, two teaspoons is plenty. You can even go scant if you want it less salty. taste buds. Uh, they used to think that, yeah, they used to think that we just had taste buds that detected, uh, what was it, sweet, um, salty, bitter, what was the other one? I can't remember now. Savory. Sour. 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 Thank you. Sour and bitter. Yes. So that, they used to think we had four sets of taste buds. But a few years ago they discovered we had five. And the fifth one is called umami. U-M-A-M-I, that's how it's spelled, umami. And uh, what the umami is, is that detects the subtle, um, it almost like gives your food a kick, it's like that, aha. Uh, it's savory, like a savory. And, no, it's not savory. It's it's its, <laughs> it's, its own uh, flavor and it's really hard to describe. But God has naturally put umami in a lot of the things that he created. Like, there's natural umami flavor in wheat. Um, there's natural umami flavor in uh, soybeans. Uh, there's natural umami flavor in a lot of our things. And so, like, for instance, soy sauce. Soy sauce is a concentrated soy. It has a lot of the umami in it. So it triggers your umami taste buds a lot, which is why soy sauce makes you, like, crave more. It's like, wow, this is really good. Uh, nutritional yeast also has uh, triggers your umami flavor, which is why uh, it's another one of those things that just makes the food taste really good. Um, uh, MSG also triggers the umami, which is why a lot of people like to dump it on their food. I don't recommend it. Uh, so it's interesting when you look at the things God created, there's little bits in it. But the things that man has created, there's lots of it in it. And uh, so umami is not bad, but you don't want huge quantities of it or it on in all of your food, if that makes any sense. So that's why I don't recommend sprinkling nutritional yeast on everything that you eat um, or putting soy sauce on everything you eat or things like that because um, of 
those special umami taste buds. Um, so anyway, that's a little very basic science lesson on <laughs> taste buds. <laughs> Alright, so do I have everything in here or am I missing something? Yeah. Oh yes, that's, that's why I was saying about the umami. Anything that is sweet and sour combined triggers your umami taste buds. So that's why a lot of like salad dressings have sweet and sour, whether it be sugar and vinegar or sugar and lemon juice or you know some kind of sweet and tart. Um, that triggers your umami. Also, and of course, uh, fast food companies know this, the perfect combination of fried, your fat, salt, and sugar that combination triggers the most umami reaction of any combination. So guess why we like fast food? <laughs> it's very addictive because of that. Anyway, just uh, some interesting things that uh, food companies use to make us want to buy more. <laughs> They're make noise. So I didn't think I had to show you how to do that. <laughs> so this is pre-cooked pasta, which has been sitting here a long time. So it's probably a little bit dry. Let me see. I think I'm going to need one more wood spoon, Matthew. I'm going to fluff these up a little bit before I stick the cheese in it. So what you ate was gluten-free brown rice noodles. That's what that was. Um, I used the Tink Yada brand. Thank you. So you'll notice it says when you cook the pasta and drain it, it says to save some of the water, some of the pasta water. And you're going to use that to help thin out your cheese to whatever consistency that you want. So I saved some of my pasta water. <laughs> I'm just going to put a little bit here in my blender. Help rinse my blender out. If you forget, numb your pasta water out, it's fine. You can use regular water. So this is the recipe for one pound of pasta, which is about, I'm wearing cheese here, about a heaping four cups of uh, pasta.
just going to mix this up. And there are some people that are eyeing it because they're ready to dive in as soon as I get this made because they already ate the whole first batch. <laughs> Doesn't that look amazing? Wait, not a guess, there is and the amazing thing is, you don't have to cook the cheese. You simply dump it in the oven and it's ready to serve. Why? How much better can you get? <laughs> yeah, we can use that bowl again. How do it taste like cheese if it's not? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? If, <laughs> no, it's not amazing. It's the mommy flavor in the like nutritional it. yeast. Oh. It gives it that cheese flavor. Okay. No, that's, that's the key. I wanted to take a photo. I don't think it happened. It's the science of food. <laughs> did you get any photos of the food before we dove into it? Or you just did the Facebook Live? I just did the Facebook Live. Okay. So, yeah, I need a photo of this. And I'm going to take a photo of this as soon as I get in the bowl. <laughs> so what do you think? I can smell it from here. <laughs> it smells good. That was it. I wish the rest of you on Facebook could come and try it. It tastes so amazing. It does. <laughs> Matthew's bringing me a bowl, and I'll have it out here in a second. Are there any questions on anything? I have a comment, but I don't think I'll get in trouble because I don't think my sister's watching this. She is a baker of our family, and she does stuff from scratch, and that pie is better than hers. <laughs> but she's not on here. <laughs> We're bringing it. We're rinsing it up. Yummy, yummy. I can't wait to dive in. <laughs> Yay! With no you, arm. Matthew. Thank you so much. Just sit right there. Put it somewhere where we can get a nice picture without all the stuff in the background. I will take some pictures as soon as possible. Nobody can eat it until I get a picture of it. Mm -hmm. and then you can have all you want. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, smash that heart button and that thumb button. We want to see them. <laughs> oh, yes. Wasn't this fun? I'm just always so excited to see all the different ways that you can make amazing, healthy food taste good. <laughs> Mac and cheese without the cheese. All right, don't let anyone eat until I get a photo of it. So you can put it over there. <laughs> all right, well, I think that's everything for tonight. I'm going to give a teaser for next month because next month we're going to be doing something very special for Christmas. You will not want to miss it. We have some special treats. Uh, so, yes. You will definitely want to come next month. It's the third Tuesday of every month at 6 p.m. I don't know the date for the third Tuesday of December. November. 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 We'll figure it out. November. November's month. Sorry. Yes. That was good. <laughs> Father in heaven, thank you for this fun time that we've had together, the, together this evening, for all those who could be here and those who could watch online. I pray that you will bless each one as we go our separate ways until we meet again. In Jesus' name.